Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, the private sector weighing in on the NHI primary care delay. The labor minister says government has created double the 10,000 jobs promised. The PLP chairman says all women should vote yes on all four gender referendum bills. And as always, we check out this week's cutest kids and pets. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. What may be an indefinite delay in the rollout for primary care for government's national health insurance plan is being called prudent by the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation given where stakeholders are in the process of implementing the complex schemes. Chamber CEO Edison Sumner said a delay was imminent and had been called for by local stakeholders for more than a year now. Uh, when we looked at the whole structure of NHI, the implementation of it, the work that was required to go into the launch of this next phase, which would have been the um, implementation of the primary health care facilities, uh, we made a determination a long time ago that based on what we knew, the timing for this wasn't right, um, that there was a lot more work that needed to go into the development of the process. Um, the private sector stakeholders particularly had to be the ones to be on board with this um, because we are the ones who are going to have to help manage it from whether it's the medical practitioners, um, some involvement of the, uh, the private health insurers in the, in the country and also eventually the employers will have to be very intimately. Consultants from international accounting firm KPMG announced government's decision to delay the rollout earlier this week. KPMG is the third foreign group government has hired to assist with NHI's implementation, the first two being Sanagest International, which maintains some involvement in the implementation process, and PricewaterhouseCoopers, which has been hired to determine the cost of the plan. Sumner said these new consultants are charged with liaising between government and the private sector, which have had a strained relationship in the process to ensure all parties are on the same page. We now know that based on their recommendations that they are advising that the $100 million that the government projected um, as the launch of primary health care is an adequate sum to begin the process, but it's not to complete the process, so to speak. We know that they are going to be looking at the structure of uh, not only the, the primary health care benefits, but also looking at the, uh, the second round, which is the catastrophic um, catastrophic um, um, coverage um, aspects as well. So <clears throat> we think that where we are now with the consultation process is where we really should have been months and months ago, right? The fact is now we are at least, it's, it's a long overdue process, but we are glad at least now that the government has accepted that this process is necessary. But with no time frame for how long government intends to engage consultants and stakeholders to tie up those loose ends, Sumner said it's incumbent on government to look past the political landscape to ensure universal health care isn't used as a tool in the impending election cycle. Similar to the process that we did with VAT and similar to what's happening now with the National Development Plan, the discussion on the implementation of NHI has to transcend politics. Right, and that's why we were insistent on this from the beginning that this has to have the buy-in um, of the entire political directorate, whether they're in government or in opposition, um, so that when this is implemented, we're not going to run the risk of having another government, whether it's the same party returning with, with different structure or another party coming into government, coming in to make drastic amendments so soon after uh, this has been implemented. And despite hiring foreign consultants, Sumner said government also intends to create a consultancy group made up of local stakeholders. The government is about to uh, establish or create a new con consultation group and they've made it very clear that the chamber is going to be intimately involved in that process. Uh, once we have been given the formal notice um, and communication on that, then of course we'll discuss it internally 
and we will have our um, persons likely to be Derek or on, on another, depending how many how many members they're looking for. Well, KPMG consultants said earlier this week that the NHI delay was necessary so that government could find a group capable of running the new public health insurer and so that government could appoint a new program board. Despite the setbacks, the consultants insist they're taking all of the necessary steps to have NHI up and running as soon as possible. NHI Bahamas launched with phase, with phase one in January of registration. Since then, thousands of Bahamians have registered for an IB smart card, which is necessary for you to get your care. The consultants say they're making strides in getting the word about the new health care system around the family islands. We have traveled the islands of the Bahamas, talking to residents about NHI Bahamas and what it will do to them and for them. We've heard their concerns, listened to their stories, answered their questions, and collected their feedback. Dr. Kevin Bow says all legal Bahamian residents will be eligible for NHI despite any pre-existing health conditions. The time has finally come that we are at the stage in our journey towards universal health care where we continue our implementation of the financing mechanism, that is NHI Bahamas, that will ensure legal Bahamian residents, no matter your age, your income, island of residence, or pre-existing health condition, can receive health care at no cost at the point of service. In other news, Minister of Labor and National Insurance Shane Gibson this week maintaining his stance that the Progressive Liberal Party has created thousands of jobs since it became government in 2012. Gibson said despite those who claim that the PLP did not follow through on its promise to create 10,000 jobs, he's confident that government has doubled that figure. They kept saying that the PLP promised 10,000 jobs. Well, we have doubled that. And it's not, that's not information from us, that's information from the Department of Statistics. And so from the time we came in, in May of 2012, to when the Department of Statistics issued information November of last year, every six months we created jobs, continuously. Now, if you have 4,000 kids coming out of school and you were able to hold the unemployment rate by only dropping 0.1% from 14.8 to 14.7, that is absolutely remarkable, but we still have a lot of work to do because you still have over 30,000 persons unemployed. And so to, for, for me, it's nothing to gloat about, but you have to just state the facts on the table to say this is what it is. We're not happy with it. And we're doing all that we could to see if we could put a bigger dent in it. In December, the Department of Statistics revealed the unemployment rate went from 12% last May to 14.8% in November. The department said the increase was caused by layoffs at Baja Mar, graduated students joining the labor force, and of the effects of Hurricane Joaquin. Despite that, Gibson said when it comes to the rise in unemployment, it's not the PLP to blame. When you look at the unemployment numbers, under the f and they continue to go down. One year they lost over 10,000 jobs, right? When you look at the net difference each year over year with the PLP, between 2002 and 2007, we created jobs every year. Now, obviously, like I, I tried to explain to those persons who refused to listen from last year, that job creation have, not, have um, no direct bearing on unemployment rate, not proportionate. Because if you create 3,000 jobs this month, you have some persons moving from old job to new job, right? Some persons coming into job for the first time, but not all persons who are unemployed will be employed. And so even though you create 20,000 jobs, the unemployment rate is not affected proportionally simply because you have people moving from job to job. But that don't stop you from knowing how many jobs are created. FNM took it to the 14.8% because when we left office in 2007, it was 7.9. They took it to 14.8 and then they want us to reduce it back to 7.9 overnight. It's not going to happen. It's going to take time. Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts is expressing confidence in a successful gender equality referendum, explaining that if every woman in the Bahamas were to vote yes, then the bills would pass. And to date, he hasn't met a single intelligent Bahamian woman who doesn't support the bills. Here's Dana Smith. Numerically, the females in this country have the numbers, the solid numbers. So if one of them go to the polls and vote, that's it. And I get a clear impression I haven't met a woman yet, an intelligent woman, who does not support gender equality. You got a couple out there who are extraneous who don't understand. 
so they will be pulled along. The gender equality bills passed in Parliament earlier this month to celebration, with many welcoming the bill's passage as a step closer towards gender equality. But many have also voiced concerns about one or more of the bills. Some supporters have said a better and stronger education campaign is needed for a successful referendum. But Robert said he doesn't believe education is a problem. Well, we've been educating our people all along, you know. If this goes for the next 50 years, you'll still have some people saying, I don't understand it. Robert said one way that a successful referendum can be guaranteed is if Bahamian women band together and show up at the polls. If just them alone, if it's them alone, if we, we, we have no, no choice in the matter. They have the numerical numbers. Yes, they do. And I know an intelligent Bahamian woman could possibly say she don't want to be equal to the men and have the same rights. If you could find some intelligent ones, please, I'd like to talk with him. And as for how he'll be voting, Robert said he's been ready for a long time and he'll be voting yes to all four of the bills. He noted women have contributed much to the country and when it comes to education, they're outpacing the men. All four of them, yes, ma'am. Been ready a long time. I believe in our women. I love our women and I believe our women have made outstanding contributions to the Bahamas. Whilst, he's, whilst many of our guys sitting at COB waiting for the ladies to come out of school, the women are in school getting it between their, four, their two ears. Roberts added, when it comes to the fight for gender equality, jealousy may also be at play. I always try to fellas and say, Ma, why don't you go and get the education too? These women are leaving us behind. And they get jealous over it. They get jealous. Some men get jealous because they see women advancing themselves educationally. But there is an equal opportunity for them to also move in the same direction of the women. But they don't. So the women have to pull them along, and they get jealous too when our women go and marry a foreigner because they can't find somebody here. Reporting for NB12 Weekend, I'm Dana Smith.